Hello, my dear brothers and sisters. Last October, the Area Presidency received a charge from the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles to introduce to the Philippines the concept of members of the Church linking arms with missionaries in the work of the ministry. Never did we imagine what a challenging task that would become as in March of this year, a worldwide pandemic would literally shut down travel and drive us into quarantined conditions. I wondered as cities, provinces, townships, and barangay initiated stringent lockdowns and over 1,600 missionaries were evacuated from the Philippines, how would we ever succeed at linking arms in any ministry under these conditions? Now, brothers and sisters, I know you have taught me. I have been inspired by things I have seen and heard and I would like to share with you just a few examples here today. We are so very blessed here in the Philippines. We have serving among us over 2,600 dedicated elder and sister missionaries. They're all around us. This worldwide pandemic has caused missionaries throughout the world to be called back to their home countries. We have had many return to the Philippines from Europe, Africa, North and Southeast Asia, even from Canada and other parts of North and South America. As a result of this massive movement of missionaries, we now see many nations that, for a time, will have significantly depleted missionary forces among them. But that is not the case here. That is not the case here in the Philippines. This valiant nation where the gospel has only been preached for less than six decades still has a vibrant army of devoted missionaries serving every day from the confines of their apartments. Think of it. Most of their apartments are very small, humble dwellings with not much more than a couple beds, perhaps a small stove, sink, and fridge. No television, no video games, no radio, Yet out of these circumstances, these faithful young missionaries continue to awake in the mornings, exercise, study the scriptures, put on their missionary clothes, and strive best they can, some by smartphones, but most by ordinary cell phones, to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ to anyone and everyone who will listen. Recently, Elder Camolo and Elder Penetrante serving in the Antipolo mission, asked one of their recent converts if she knew of anyone who might be interested in their message. In response, the Oblea family invited their friend named Menchi to their home, where they introduced her to the missionaries over the phone. Before COVID-19, I don't think I ever imagined introducing someone to the missionaries over the phone. But the Obleas did it. I marvel as I think of what that moment must have been like. Elders Gamolo and Penetrante tell us that the Spirit filled both their apartment and the Oblea's home. As the elders taught and testified of the restoration of the gospel over their cell phone, the Spirit filled their hearts. During the lesson, Sister Novi, who was also a recent convert and was there with them, bore her testimony that what the elders were teaching was true. When the elders asked Menchi how she felt, she replied that she felt the confirming power of the Holy Ghost. Well, every Sunday since, every Sunday since that first lesson, the Obleas have continued to invite Menchi to their home, and she continues happily to come. Together, the Obleas, Menchi, and the missionaries participate in studying Come Follow Me. Last Thursday, Menchi accepted an invitation to be baptized. Elder Gamolo and Elder Penetrante testify that they know members and missionaries working together can help each other make this great work move forward even in lockdown conditions. Truly, this is an example of members and missionaries linking arms in the ministry to bring the happiest message the world has ever known to the beautiful people of the Philippines. Elder Cabrera and Elder Magali tell of similar miracles that have happened in the Alangapo mission. 
as members and missionaries have worked together during quarantine to share the gospel. They received a referral from overseas to speak with a grandmother who is a member of the church but had been less active for five years. They met this dear sister for a video chat using their smartphones and learned that she had children and grandchildren who were also interested in their message. The family had previously been ministered to by President Manalato, the branch president of the Kutud branch. All of these connections came together as the missionaries introduced themselves to Sister Rita and began to teach with their smartphone over video chat. Elder Cabrera and Elder Magale declare, quote, Despite our circumstances, it was not a hindrance to us to do missionary work. It takes the spirit, creativity, and determination. We so testify deep in our soul. The Lord prepares his children and his sheep to hear his voice, and he knows them, and they follow him. Close quote. Thank you, Elder Cabrera and Elder Magale. And thank you to the wonderful members of the Katud branch for linking arms in this great work. Sisters Corachea, Castillo, and Formalejo serve in the Bacolod Philippines mission. They tell an inspiring story of how they were referred by Sister Dero and her husband to visit with Cosette Amar, who is searching for, the, for a church for her family to attend. Cosette invited the missionaries into her home and the lessons began in January. Soon thereafter, the Amar family began attending church. They were warmly welcomed by the members and Cosette remarked that she had never seen her children so excited as they were after their first primary classes. The members of the ward embraced the Amar family and sisters Corachea, Castillo, and Formalejo relate that they truly felt they were linked together with the members as together they taught, fellowshiped, and strengthened the Amar family. Things were going so well, that is, until the pandemic closed everything down. The sisters tell of the sadness they felt as they were no longer able to visit the Amars nor attend church with them. Nevertheless, they did what they could with their phones. They made calls and sent text messages. Members of the ward tried to stay in touch and continued to minister. The result? A baptism date was set, but sadly had to be canceled later due to travel and quarantine restrictions. The sister missionaries fasted and prayed that somehow the way might open up. Soon President Sumagpao and Bishop Mojico counseled together and made a plan for the baptisms to move forward. A date was selected and on May 2nd, Brother Balion, a member of the ward, picked up the sister missionaries and transported them to the meeting house. There, Brother Amar was first baptized, confirmed, and then received the Aaronic Priesthood and was ordained to the office of a priest. He then baptized his wife, their oldest son and daughter, while their two younger children observed at the side of the font. The program was simple. Three members of the ward were able to attend along with the missionaries. These dear sisters testify that the miracles they saw as the family embraced the gospel were made possible because together they and ward members strived to diligently link arms in the Lord's great redemptive work. I've read story after story like this, submitted to me over the past several days by mission presidents throughout the Philippines. Missionaries in the Goa Second Ward speak of teaching a mother in a part member family who is visited and ministered to by a member of the church who lives nearby, or Minda, not a member of the church, who was being taught by the missionaries before quarantine began. Sister Minda has continued to be taught by the missionaries, but the real strength has come from the Ridonario and Se families in the branch. Together they minister to Minda at their home by sharing their testimonies with her and helping her to see how the gospel can bring true joy 
despite the challenges that confront us in our lives during this quarantined condition that we live in. The Redonario and Say families are such remarkable examples that Minda continued to want to learn more of the gospel. As a result, the missionaries have taught her the lessons over the phone, and on her own she is reading and praying about the Book of Mormon. Sister Minda has now received a witness from the Holy Ghost that the Book of Mormon is the Word of God, that this is the Lord's Church. With some hesitation, she approached her husband for permission to be baptized. His response? Well, she had asked him for permission before to join other churches, which he had refused. This time, though, was different. She had prayed that he would give his permission, and the Lord had prepared the way. Her husband did grant his permission, and Minda is planning soon to be baptized. Elder Baldoza from the Tacloban Mission explains that these miracles generated by members and missionaries serving together continue even after these dear converts enter the waters of baptism. Two recent converts, both baptized on February 22nd, have continued to be ministered to by young single adults of the Tacloban Second Ward. Though nearly two months transpired without the missionaries being able to have any significant contact, the young single adult leaders continued to provide fellowship and support to Brother Nofis and Brother Pornius. In the Karigara First Ward, Sister Panis goes about tirelessly visiting investigators and new converts, providing continuing strength and fellowship even through the limitations that are imposed by this pandemic. Well, these stories go on and on. I send a brief email to the mission presidents that preside over the 23 missions here in the Philippines requesting stories like this, and in just two days they sent dozens and dozens of these accounts. Because of the success and excitement that many have found in this great effort, by members and missionaries to link arms in the ministry, the Area Presidency announces today that each week we will post on the Philippines Newsroom and the Church's Facebook page a new story about members and missionaries linking arms as they share the gospel with their non-member friends. These members and missionaries have learned for themselves the reality of the Savior's promise given through Joseph Smith. Quote, he that preacheth and he that receiveth understand one another, and both are edified and rejoice together. They have felt together that indeed the worth of souls is great in the sight of God." Close quote. During the six decades from 1830 to 1890, the membership of the church grew to about 188,000 members. That was in 60 years. In less than six decades, the membership of the church in the Philippines has exploded to well over 800,000 members. This is a tribute to the heart and the spirit of the Filipino people. It is a testament of your desire to share the joy of the gospel with your family, friends, and associates. In the midst of this pandemic, people around us are asking more and more questions of eternal significance. The meaning of life, the eternal significance of family relationships, the nature of God. And we have the glorious answers to these questions of the heart. My prayer, dear brothers and sisters, is that we may continue to link arms with this army of dedicated young elders and sisters until the wave of the gospel message floods over the Philippines, filling every heart and every home with the peace and joy of this eternal message. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.